All right. Last week, I uh, promised you that I will do some kind of a presentation of the work that God is doing in the Philippines. And actually, some of the pictures that I will show you later on are pictures from Australia because of the trip that I made uh, the last, uh, not last month, but two months ago in May. And uh, I am excited to share with you those pictures. But before that, let me just read to you first Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 to 11, because this letter of Paul to the Philippians, in a way, kind of expresses my feeling towards you, all of you here at Morris Hill Church of Christ. So let me start from verse 3. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you all. In view of your participation in the gospel from the first day until now, for I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. For it is only right for me to feel this way about you all because I have you in my heart since both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of grace with me. For God is my witness how I long for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in real knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve the things that are excellent in order to be sincere and blameless until the day of Christ, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness which comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I just want you to know that I thank God for you every day. And there are five things, actually, that Paul mentioned here regarding the Philippians. Like I said, that I, I kind of uh, identify with. Not the imprisonment, because I have not been imprisoned. <laughs> like Paul was imprisoned. And uh, he wrote this uh, epistle to the Philippians because he said, I, I'm, I'm missing you guys. Uh, the book of Philippians is actually called uh, one of the prison epistles. One of those letters of Paul that he wrote while he was in prison. And so he wanted to express uh, to the Philippians his thanksgiving for them. And like I said, I, I, uh, I, I, as, as, as I'm reading this and as, as I'm thinking of how can I do this presentation? I would just like first to tell you uh, five things that Paul mentioned that I, like I said, personally feel about you all, uh, about the, the work that God is doing in the Philippines. Uh, uh, many of you, or if not all of you probably, uh, uh, have not heard that this church had been working with Open Door Mission I believe since like 1990, since 1990, so over 30 years ago. And the first time that I came, that I arrived here actually at Morris Hill was uh, for a wedding. This was June of 1986. I just got married a month before and then my best friend from college got married here to Denise Hill. Some of you will remember Denise, right? Bill Hill's daughter, Brian Shriver, my roommate in college, married Denise, Denise Hill. He was my best man in my wedding, and I was his best man in his wedding here at Morris Hill Church of Christ. That was 1986. That was the first time I met the people of Morris Hill Church of Christ. Well, that same year, we went back to the Philippines, 1986. And then 1989, we came back to the U.S. and we were missionaries during the VBS of Morris Hill Church of Christ in 1989. All right. And then 1990, before we went back to the Philippines, the Joy Club started supporting Open Door Mission. 
1990. Because we were here in the U.S. for a year. I went back to school 1989 to 90. And then 90, we went back to the Philippines. And the Joy Club started supporting the Open Door Mission. And then we came back to the U.S. again in 93, and that's when the church started supporting the, 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 the Open Door Mission. So, like Paul says here, from the very beginning, almost, right, of Open Door Mission, this church have been a part of the mission in the Philippines. And so, I thank you because of your participation in the gospel. And that participation is in two ways. You are you have participated in the message of Jesus Christ because you wholeheartedly received the message and accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you also have participated in the gospel by sending someone to the mission field to preach the gospel. Uh, you did not know me that well when you first uh, met me and started supporting, but uh, you loved God and you wanted to be involved in world mission. And so every time we were home, uh, we made it uh, our goal to be a part of either the VBS here or come and make a presentation and join you in, in the services here every time we were home. And uh, not realizing that later on, <laughs> when we finally went back to the, the U.S. again in 2008, and then later on two years later, becoming the minister of Morris Hill Church of Christ. And so, yeah, I started being the minister here in 2010. So it's been, uh, it's been 13 years. Can you believe that? It's hard to believe that time has flown and yeah, we, we, all, we all have been particip uh, participants of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the word of God has spread to the Philippines. And I'm excited to tell you that right now there's more than 20 church plants going on in the Philippines. Uh, I did not have the privilege to see all of the churches, but I invited them to come to Manila and was able to go to some of them. I'm gonna show you some pictures later on of the uh, mission that I did last, uh, last May and also to show you some pictures of the people who are involved there planting churches in the Philippines. And so again, I praise and thank God for you because of your participation in the gospel. Not only that, because of the good work that God began in you. The good work that God began in you. You know, uh, uh, some people uh, are thinking that, that that, that you have to wait until you are a big church before you become involved in foreign mission. That, that's, that's, not, that's not true. Uh, that, that's why I appreciate so much this church because this is not a mega church and yet you are, this church is involved in foreign mission. Actually like with the mission that you're doing, uh, that you have been supporting in the Philippines, we, the, the, the mission there, the open door mission that we work with is involved actually not only in the Philippines but even in Canada and now in Australia and was also in Indonesia. And that's why I always tell people that, you know, one, uh, uh, when, when, when we all get to heaven, uh, you will meet people from Indonesia, from Australia, from the Philippines and from Canada that you were not able to meet here on earth. And find the connection that those people were able to make it to heaven because you supported a mission that reached out to the people of Indonesia, Australia, Canada, and the Philippines. And wouldn't that be a glorious day when you shake hands with someone that you did not have a chance to meet here on earth but meet in heaven because the good work that God has started in you continued to grow to reach out to others. Another thing that I am so thankful to God for this church is because of the promise of perfection when Christ returns. A promise of perfection, like I said, heaven itself. There's a promise of perfection for all of us that God 
is going to do. You see, here on earth, we are so imperfect. Our bodies deteriorate. Our abilities deteriorate. But there is a time in heaven when God will give to us glorious bodies that will never decay anymore. And that is one thing that we all look forward to in the future. We look forward to that. Why? Because here on earth, we face a lot of challenges. We face a lot of trials. We face a lot of difficulties. But we look forward to that day when we will be in heaven and all the aches and pains will be gone. The Bible tells us that in heaven there will be no more sorrow, no more death, no more hunger, no more thirst. That's something that we look forward to. A day when we will be perfect in Jesus Christ. And that's a promise that God has given to us. What he has began in us will come to perfection on the day when Christ returns. Another thing, though, that I am thankful to God for you is because I have you in my heart. Like I said... You know, we, we have been together in the preaching of the gospel for more than 30 years now. Amazing. And you know what? In the 30 years that we have been partners in Christ and in the gospel, we have shared the gospel to, to many people, not only in the Philippines, but in other parts of the world. Uh, let me just... Uh, uh, also give to you a report that last year, actually at the end of, uh, at the, end of the year, uh, even with the pandemic, uh, the people in the Philippines that we have been supporting to share the gospel uh, gave a report of more than 120 people who got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are all participants of that. Even though we were not able to go to another country, we allowed our prayers and our support to go there. Just this last May, uh, without the help of this church, it would have been impossible to go back to the Philippines and do the summit, do the meetings, uh, do the lecturing, and the visiting of the many churches and individuals that the Open Door Mission has been supporting. And then lastly, I thank God for you because of your continued growth in your relationship with Christ. Because you know what? That is one thing that uh, we do here in the church is uh, how can we become even more involved? And that's what we're doing. That's why even now we're involved in what is going on in Kosovo with Alexandra and Liren. Why? Because we want to get involved even more because that is what God wants for us. And that is a result of our growth in our relationship with Christ. Because the more we grow in our relationship with Christ, the more we grow in our love for Christ, the more also that we grow in our love, not only for the brethren, but in our love for the lost. So that they too may come to know Jesus Christ and find salvation in Him alone. And so again, I thank you. God for you. And I thank God for the privilege that we have as Open Door Mission to be partners with you in the gospel of Jesus Christ by sharing the gospel to the lost people of the world. Let me just show you now some pictures. Of course, you know these two people here, right? <laughs> Open Door Mission, Tito and Sandy Pell. And let me just show you some pictures from my trip to the Philippines and Australia uh, this last May of 2023. A koala bear from Australia, of course. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and uh, this is in the hotel in Sydney, uh, uh, teaching actually th these three people who are uh, very interested in starting house churches. That's Noel Labordo and his wife, Aussie, and uh, Andrew. Okay, go ahead, Mike. And uh, this is in front of the uh, Sydney Opera House. 
My wife told me, I know you don't have time to go around looking uh, at beautiful places there, but can you please take a picture of the Sydney Opera House? And actually, it got cut there. But anyway, I was with the, the guy that I'm standing with is Charlie uh, Ayuno. He's the one that in, in Canada, uh, a former student of mine who's been planting churches in Canada. That's why I've been going there. So we were both invited to go uh, there to Australia. This is Noel again and Aussie and uh, Andrew. And uh, this is Tumaini Kashindi. He is from the Congo, but ministered in uh, South Africa and uh, met his wife there, Rochelle, and uh, went back to Australia and started a church uh, uh, for uh, the Congolese uh, people. And uh, is very interested in doing house church and that is why we came to visit them because they were not able to come to the hotel because his wife is uh, having some uh, issues with her pregnancy so he couldn't leave her and so we went to them and train them also. This still at the hotel. Uh, in. And now uh, we did a four day summit. Actually, when I look at the date, it's actually three, but I remember we were there starting on the 13th, uh, the, the 11th up to the 14th of May to do, uh, to do a, sum a summit titled Align. And here are some pictures of that summit. These are the people who attended that summit. And uh, uh, it was funny because uh, the, the, the lady that was supposed to speak to the ladies was not able to come, so I ended up with the ladies. <laughs> but this is with the, with the, with the group, actually with, with the wives. And uh, yeah, we did lectures there for three days and uh, did a lot of praying with them. Oh, this some more pictures of the group. Uh, this is on the last day, so everyone was wearing the same shirt. Uh, go ahead, Mike. And uh, I had a meeting with the, with the Open Door Mission church planters, just the church planters in Las Piñas. And this is them. Uh, not everyone was able to come, but most of them uh, attended the meeting. And uh, we had an all-day uh, meeting with them, discussing different ways to uh, lead house churches. And so I invited Charlie to join us also and share what he's doing in Canada. And uh, it, was a, it was a beautiful and wonderful day with all of them. Uh, I also attended on my last uh, day there uh, the church anniversary of CCM. CCM was the first church we started, 1992, in, uh, in the Philippines. And uh, it's, it is continuing, and it actually has been the, the uh, jumping board for all the other churches being planted within Metro Manila that uh, we were able to start. So CCM has been instrumental, and so we continue to be connected, of course, with CCM. So every time I am home, I make it a point to attend a, a, a worship service there and to preach there and uh, meet the new people uh, that have been coming. And let me uh, introduce to you or show you pictures of the church planters. This is June and Tita Rodis. They're the ones that are in CCM and very instrumental in uh, planting the church in Bacoor and uh, other churches in Metro Manila. Uh, go ahead, Mike. This is uh, Mike and Ligaya Chang. They are in Taitai and instrumental in planting a church in the Cagayan uh, Valley and also in the Bicol uh, region. This is Nestor and Yang Morines. Uh, he is actually right now in, down in Mindanao uh, because there are two church plants there that he is mentoring and uh, he is there with his wife uh, right now. And uh, this is Henry and Lani Pagawitan. Uh, Henry uh, used to be an atheist, was with the Communist Party of the Philippines, uh, became a Christian uh, in college and uh, now had become a pastor and uh, the head, the lead uh, pastor in uh, Ortigas and also in Pasay. This is Chris and Arlene Salamat. Uh, they are in Malolos and uh, Chris uh, actually is kind of a, a distant relative who uh, went to Bible college and uh, started planting churches in, 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 in the Philippines. Also, uh, Arnold and Annalyn uh, de Guzman, they are with uh, the Christ Church in Makati uh, and uh, instrumental in planting the church in Bacoor also. And uh, this is uh, Jan and uh, Marga Tiples. Uh, they are uh, business people but are uh, 
now uh, we call them bivocational people leading the church in Bacoor. That's with their son. And uh, Luisito and Melinda uh, Invencion are in Pangasinan up north and uh, also planting a church there. He also was a former student of mine in the Bible College. And uh, Fred and Sharon Dahalos down in Cebu, another uh, uh, big uh, city in the Philippines, the second largest city, and uh, working on uh, campuses, planting uh, churches uh, in uh, college campuses in Cebu. This is Gani and uh, Karen Ibarrientos, and uh, they are in the Bicol region and have uh, planted actually about five churches now there in the Bicol region. And uh, this is uh, Jonathan and his uh, two uh, kids uh, working in uh, Baguio and then back to Cebu and now back in Baguio again. And he's the one who started the church in the Baliwag uh, area of, uh, of the Philippines. Uh, this is uh, Enan and uh, Jeroimi, uh, uh, oh gosh, what's their last name? Mariano. Anyway, uh, they're in another island in the Philippines called Mindoro and uh, have planted two churches there already uh, in the last uh, three or so years. And uh, this is Lim Paul and Nika Burse. Uh, they are, uh, actually, uh, I got to meet them only for the first time, the second time, uh, last time I was there. They were the ones that were trained by Ghani to lead, uh, it's a Ghani, uh, to, to lead the church there. And Cesar is a, a pastor that have uh, planted the church in Cagayan uh, that was mentored by Mike and Ligaya Chang. And uh, this is uh, Edward and Lenny. Uh, also uh, trained by Mike and Ligaya and planted the church in Bicol also, another part of Bicol. And uh, this is Jim Well and Jing Estolonio. They're also in Bicol, but they were trained by Nestor and Yang. And I'm sure you can say, okay, all these names, we don't even remember them, right? But uh, I'm just rattling them off. And of course, another ministry that we are involved in is the Makati Integrated Christian Academy. Right now, everything is online for this. And this is Robert and Vibes Dalipe. Uh, they are uh, the pastor administrator and principal of Makati Integrated, like I said, which is now online because uh, during, the, during the pandemic, uh, the, 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 church, the, the schools were closed down. And then later on, they required so many things for you to open up, but they allow you to stay online. And so that is what they are doing right now with uh, about uh, 30 or so students that they have. La two weeks ago when I was, uh, when I was in uh, San Diego, uh, our, the, 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 the speaker for the Sunday service was uh, a man that I've mentioned to you before. His name is Leonard Thompson. He's uh, from India, came to the Philippines to study in the Bible College there, and then uh, went to Cincinnati Bible College and Seminary. And so he has a very, his heart is very close to the Filipinos, so he was invited to speak. And uh, in his sermon uh, that Sunday, I was uh, really moved by his challenge to the Filipinos. Because he said, I know, I know the perseverance of the Filipinos, that you know, wherever you go, you, know, uh, you will share the gospel with fellow Filipinos. But he said, my challenge to you, Filipino brothers and sisters, is this. He said, what are you doing for your neighbors in Asia? Because he said, there's over a billion people in India with less than 1% Christianity. Almost 300 million Muslims in Indonesia. And the question again is, what are you doing about it? It really hit me hard. Because I know I'm doing a lot for Filipinos everywhere in the US, or uh, not everywhere, but in a lot of places in the US and Canada and the Philippines. But what about for other cultures? And that's the question that we identify being in Indiana, rural Indiana. Right. We identify with the, the rural, but we have to. But we have to, exactly, right. And like I said, that, that's what hit me because 
you know, I, I have so much concerns, especially for the Filipinos in other parts of the world, but what about the other culture? And that, that was the challenge that he gave. And like I said, it, it just hit me. It just really hit me. What are we doing to reach other cultures? Who are in the US now our neighbors? Because they're coming. They are coming. Are we reaching them? Is the question. All right, so that is the challenge for all of us. What are we doing to reach our neighbors, especially those who are in a different culture?